We are continuing our lectures on inferential statistics as part of the quantitative methods of research. We are simplifying things for undergraduate students level and of course uh, uh, I'm also explaining how you could do it in uh, SPSS very briefly so it's up to you to read more and explore that. Now this 10th lecture is about t-tests. T-tests are used as an inferential statistical test to compare the mean scores between two groups. So to begin with, you're comparing two variables, either coming from two independent groups or from the same group. We'll talk about that more. But you have two variables. You have two sets of scores on the same variable or two variables. But you're seeing, you're comparing the mean scores. Is there a difference on the mean scores? That is t-test. Now, a point of small interest, just to entertain you a little bit. Why don't we have a name of a person attached to this test? We call it t-test or sometimes referred to as student's t-test. There's a story about a certain statistician, William Gossett. He was working for Guinness Breweries in Dublin. And Guinness Breweries was one of the first companies ever to assess their products and the sale on the basis of statistical analysis. So they employed the statistician to predict their trends in sale and in such a way that they can be efficient in their production and to compare and see which product sold better than which. So to answer their question, Gosset came up with this t-test and Guinness Breweries wanted him not to publish his name because they didn't want to give their trade secret out that they were using statistics in marketing and in production. So that is how he had to use a pseudonym called, he called himself student and uh, that name has come to be known. Even though his fellow statisticians even at that time knew who exactly invented this t-test. Now that is just a story. Now what happens in a t-test? Let us suppose we have an imaginary set of data here. I conducted a test on statistics competency test between two universities, let us say University of Nairobi and Strathmore. And I had a sample of 10 participants from each uh, university. And if we pay attention to the mean scores, then the mean scores suggest that the University of Nairobi students did better than the Strathmore students. So we have an average of 64.3 for the University of Nairobi and the Strathmore University students have an average of 63.6. So if you simply go by this descriptive statistical detail, you might say that University of Nairobi has done better than Strathmore. But here is where the benefit of inferential statistics comes in. Uh, if we do a t-test then, we are going to see how seriously can we take this difference in the mean score. Did it happen by chance, by luck, or actually the mean score is representative of the sample and eventually the population. Now, once again, if we pay attention to the details, you will see, notice that among the 10 participants in the University of Nairobi sample, there are two participants who have scored very high and they have skewed up their average. Whereas if you look into the detail of the Strathmore score, all of them are around their 60 scores. Whereas in the University of Nairobi, except the two, all of them are in their 50 scores. So which group performed better? Now that is where the t-test comes in. Now when we carry out the t-test, then what it does is, the t-test is going to look at the standard deviation. And if there are two really anomalous scores, they are going to change the standard deviation. Sure enough, when I did a t-test using this imaginary data, 
It shows that University of Nairobi has a standard deviation of 17 point something. Whereas the Strathmore University students, their sample has 1.8 standard deviation. So there is a possibility of more error, that's what the data is suggesting, within the data coming from University of Nairobi. And therefore, if we compare the results, given the difference of mean scores uh, in a very small level, then the t-test shows actually that this difference should not be taken seriously. It was just a by chance event. It was a result of luck. So we report that t of 18 is equal to 124 comma p is equal to 0.903. It is far high above our expected p-value of 0 0.05 and therefore this difference should not be taken seriously. Now, t of 18, where does this 18 come from? We call this degree of freedom. So in inferential statistics, I would like to introduce at this point a concept called degree of freedom. It is not an easy concept to explain, as many authors claim and acknowledge. Uh, but I would like to use an example used by certain authors that uh, makes it clear. Let us say there is a waiter taking orders from a table uh, that has five uh, people, from, uh, five customers. Now, each one orders a drink. Now, he knows, the waiter knows that there are five uh, customers and there are five drinks. If he remembers these five participants or five customers and only four drinks, then he can assume the fifth drink. He doesn't need to remember which drink, the fifth drink belongs to which customer. He can assume the leftover person will take the leftover drink. So there is a degree of freedom that he can use in his memory. Now imagine if he is taking order from two tables at the same time. Then in each table you have five customers and each of them is ordering a drink. Then he has to remember the five persons from the first table and which of the four drinks corresponds to the four customers. And one of them, he has a degree of freedom. Similarly, in the other table, he has a degree of freedom one. Now, if he is going to now collect the drinks for all the 10 together, then he has to afford, he can afford to forget two. He has a degree of freedom of two. And so this analogy will explain that when we report the inferential statistical data, we uh, put in the degree of freedom to indicate the number of groups and the number of participants. So in our imaginary data, we are comparing two groups, one group to the other. And so the degree of freedom becomes two. But the degree of freedom is actually the total number of participants minus the groups. So the total number of participants in this case is 20, 10 from each group. And so minus the number two representing the two groups. So you have a degree of freedom of 18. This is just a statistical unit as an indicator of the number of participants versus the number of groups so that when we are reporting the t value or later the chi value then we are able to take into consideration the participant size or a sample size and the size of the groups or the number of groups this is degree of freedom when you carry out the t-test in SPSS you would follow this pathway. You would go to analysis menu and choose compare means and compare means as options within itself. You can choose independent samples t-test or paired samples t-test. Now, one of the variables in this case will be a nominal variable and the other variable will be a scale variable. 
So for example, going back to our data uh, drawn from University of Nairobi and uh, start more on the statistical test, then the, there will be a variable that will indicate their university. So either every participant is going to be either from Strathmore or University of Nairobi. Now that is a nominal variable. And all of them have their scores on the statistics competence test. And that is a scale variable. So when we carry out a t-test in SPSS, the SPSS asks us, which is your grouping variable? So, in our case, the university becomes a grouping variable where every participant is grouped either into University of Nairobi or Strathmore and you feed that into the grouping variable and tell the computer, tell the SPSS how you actually grouped, what coding you used for your group. You could have said one for Strathmore, two for University of Nairobi. Just feed in that data, 1 and 2. And then you supply the scale variable into its position. So what does the SPSS do? It starts comparing the mean scores uh, the, uh, between the two groups on the basis of the grouping variable. Now, there is a small difference in the two types of t-test. Independent samples t-test and paired samples t-test. Suppose I have one group, say University of Nairobi students, and the same participants have taken two tests. I have, I'm comparing statistics or quantitative research methods versus qualitative research methods. I want to see in which test they performed better. Now we have two groups, but two variables uh, or two scores on two subjects. So we are going to compare from the same group uh, two scores. That means you are going to take paired samples t-test. Whereas if you are comparing two groups on the same variable as our data here, imagine data, on we have one test, statistical competence test, but we are comparing two groups on this score, then we are calling it independence t-test that there are, these two groups are independent. Pair samples test is the same group measured twice on two scores. And this is a, a simple, uh, just a distinction, and you must use it appropriately so that you don't create uh, what we call type one error or type two error. Type one error is when it produces false negatives, or it says there is a problem when there is no problem type 1 error and when you don't use the right t-test then it will not be uh, the proper result and a final point what happens if you're comparing more than two groups and here is where you will use ANOVA so ANOVA is a extension of t-test t-test is usually a comparison between two scores whereas when you have more than two scores you will have to go for ANOVA test. You, if you had three scores on one variable, then or three groups and one variable, then you are going for one-way ANOVA. But if you had two groups and more than two scores, then you are going for two-way ANOVA. Now, we are, we are not going to deal with ANOVA, but it's just an information to let you know that ANOVA is a development of t-test.